the vibrations are so extreme. Oh, I'm dead, I'm dead. Hello. It may look like I'm in Asia, but I'm not. I'm in Austria, and more specifically, Graz, at the headquarters of AVL, one of the biggest engineering companies in motorsport you may never have heard of. And I'm here to find out about the future of racing. These days, people are constantly talking about the future of motorsport. What will it look like? Will it be electric? Will we be using synthetic fuels? Or could we be using hydrogen, whether that's fuel cells or combustion? I want to know when we're going to see hydrogen more in mainstream motorsport. So I come down to AVL Race Tech to find out more. We are going to kick things off then with hydrogen fuel cells. Now, important thing to note is that a fuel cell will charge a battery which then powers an electric motor within a vehicle. Different to other electric vehicles you might be aware of that will require an external electric source to charge the battery. So how does this fuel cell actually work? Bear with me, I've really had to brush up on my school level chemistry today. But essentially, you'll have a load of metal sheets within here, and on one side, hydrogen is pumped in, on the other side, air. Now, because there's a membrane in the middle between those two chambers, uh, only the protons from hydrogen can pass through. The electrons have to find a different route, so they go externally and charge the battery before then meeting together again with those hydrogen protons in that air chamber to make H2O water. I think I got that right and I'm really proud of myself. <laughs> so yeah, if we're looking at this unit right here, uh, we're gonna feed um, some hydrogen down here, then also some water and then the air. But this is not all that's required to power a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. So let me introduce you to an AVL test rig for a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. And as you can see, there's a lot going on. Uh, in this big silver box is actually two of those fuel cell units. But then, as we move over here, you'll notice there's an air compressor because I mentioned we've got to pump air into those fuel cells. It actually weirdly looks like a bit of a turbo from a conventional combustion engine vehicle. But look, we're talking about hydrogen fuel cells. Where's the hydrogen? And actually, where's the battery that those fuel cells are going to be charging? Well, amazingly, here at AVL, they're able to use this rig and virtually, in real time, connect with a battery in another department and the hydrogen which is stored safely in containers outside this building. And they do all of that in an atmospheric test room just around the corner. OK, I've made it inside the fuel cell test bed and I've brought the rig with me. I actually didn't bring it, I asked some engineers to push it because it's quite heavy. <laughs> anyway, let me show you over here because I mentioned that the hydrogen and the battery are connected kind of virtually. So hydrogen comes in from here and we can connect with a battery which may be in a, another building or another department here. Then once those are connected, we have a fully active fuel cell system. Now, this right here, as I mentioned, is a test rig. It's kind of an exploded setup so that the engineers can easily access things, monitor stuff, and chop and change bits if they need to. It wouldn't look like this when it ended up in a car. But if we're talking about a race car, just compressing the size of this thing isn't the only hurdle that we need to overcome because there are some yeah, interesting issues when it comes to hydrogen fuel cells within a racing vehicle first of which is heat, and we need to get it out. So here are some examples of how we could do that. Thermal exchangers. Now in a race car, we have to have radiators, all versions of this, which is gonna take up space and add weight. The next issue is water. I mentioned that a 100 kilowatt fuel cell produces water, and quite a lot of it, around 50 liters per hour. Now, if that's coming out of the back of a race car, it sounds like we're going to have a wet race out of nowhere, which could be super exciting. Obviously, I'm exaggerating. Luckily, this is just 95% steam. But in here, AVL uses these big extraction chimneys to get rid of that water. But these are all things that have to be considered when you're talking about hydrogen fuel cells in racing vehicles. But AVL Race Tech are uniquely positioned to be analyzing all this and developing this technology as we move forward. It's not the only way they're looking at using hydrogen in racing cars, because also they're considering hydrogen combustion. And if I'm honest, that intrigues me quite a bit. Now there are some downsides, one of which is power. If you took the same size petrol and hydrogen combustion engines and stuck them in a Ford Mondeo, the hydrogen engine would have less power. 
but here's the really exciting news. AVL Racetech are developing an all new two litre hydrogen combustion engine specifically for racing, which is going to have much more power than a petrol equivalent. To get an idea of what this engine will be like, AVL uploaded it to their state of the art simulator for me to experience. Whoa. <laughs> okay, this is, this is fast. Oh, oh, oh. oh, it's got a nice, got a nice turn in. Oh, I got a bit nervous there on the accelerator. Oh, listen to that engine roar. <laughs> so, fastest lap time so far, 1 minute 31. I think let's get under the 130s. I can do it. I believe in myself. And we're through. Yes, come on, come on, 123, 124, 125. Oh, yes, 129, I did it. <laughs> I'm a professional. Oh, I'm dead, I'm dead. I'm dead. <laughs> I died. You pushed me too hard. This is just one of the AVL test beds that's been specially adapted to test hydrogen combustion engines. Here is the engine dyno, or one of the engine dynos. They're interchangeable, and the top spec one can test up to 2.5 megawatts. Here's where the engine would go. You can fit all different sizes of engines here. Here's the hose. They would actually feed hydrogen into a hydrogen combustion engine. The floor. This is a 43 ton steel and concrete floating floor on air springs that limits the vibrations of an engine when it's running. Now, if you look up here, you'll see various pipes. That's bringing the hydrogen, but also natural gas at various pressure levels and also propane and nitrogen into the building from secure tanks located outside. They then can be mixed to varying levels to kind of replicate real world situations. For example, Japan apparently has slightly lower quality natural gas than here in Europe. And they can set that up before feeding it down into the engine. Uh, over here is an extraction system for the exhaust in case there are any harmful fumes coming out and that's constantly running at negative pressure, sucking air out and away from this test bed. Now, as you can imagine, all the test beds are set up with safety protocols in place should anything go wrong. But hydrogen is a little volatile, so there's some extra measures in place. Should anything happen up in these pipes, they can flush them through with nitrogen. Should there be anything going wrong down here with the engine, and maybe even you see a flame, they can actually douse the entire room with nitrogen. So you can see why this is the perfect place for AVL Racetech to be testing that new two-litre hydrogen combustion engine for racing. Oh, I didn't even mention the other project they're working on, which is a hydrogen combustion engine for a truck that's going to try and go and set a land speed record. So there seems to be lots of exciting things happening with hydrogen combustion engines. And I'm here for it.